Well, hello, folks out there in YouTube land. Got a very big show for you. It's National Signing Day. Oh, yeah, we're going to talk about the winners and the losers today. And it got very interesting. Now, the rich got richer, which is pretty typical when it comes to uh, recruiting. And we're going to go over all of that. Also, we're going to talk about Florida and Billy Napier. It looks like he's having a very bad day. And uh, also, Jim Harbaugh didn't exactly kill it. So we're going to talk about the good and the bad and the ugly. <laughs> all right, we're going to start out with Georgia. Looks like they're going to finish number one in the country in recruiting. Again. Even though they lost to Dylan Rayola, their uh, number one recruit, they still are way up there. 315 points. Their average recruit's 93 and a half. And they got four or five stars, even though they lost one. So Georgia continues to uh, dominate in recruiting for the most part. And that kind of explains why they had five five stars leave along with nine four stars in the transfer portal. And they're just replacing them. Now, granted... They're not going to have them on the bench like they usually do. They're not going to have as much depth because a lot of these five stars and four stars that are not getting to play are going to transfer out. So it's spreading the wealth, but they're still uh, dominating in, in recruiting. It's just a fact. And it's because they have the best footprint in the country, and that's Georgia, Atlanta, Buford, all those areas right there in, in uh, Georgia is, is fantastic for recruiting. And all those kids grew up loving the Georgia Bulldogs. And they've won the last two natties. That doesn't hurt either. Now we've got the typical Alabama, 25 commits, three five-stars, almost a 93 average. Uh, looks like they're in second right now. And actually, Ohio State would be in second if they had a few more recruits because they've only got, a, what, 20, and Alabama's got 25. So Ohio State's got slightly better average, but Alabama is in second. And you can see they picked up a five-star quarterback. Of course, they've always got the – look at that. Look at these cornerbacks. That is just sickening how many great cornerbacks they have down there. And that's such a critical position. And then right on down the line, a bunch of guys in the mid-90s, very good players. But they'll have a bunch of guys hit the transfer portal as well after the uh, playoff. That's going to be pretty typical. The, the players are going to hang around to see if they can get a natty. And then once they've done that, they got the ring, and they know they're not going to play, they'll be out. Now let's take a look at Ryan Day with Ohio State. I'm going to tell you what, this – this looks like a great class, and they seem to always get those great wide receivers. Uh, Mylon Graham, look at this guy, <laughs> number nine in the country. Uh, edge rusher, five-star. Yeah, they have loaded up, absolutely loaded up. So I got to think Ryan Day's really happy with this recruiting class. And for the people that wanted him fired for losing the Michigan game, y'all are crazy. He's recruiting like, like a madman. He's winning over 90% of his games. You're getting ready to go into the 12-team playoff. You need to get off of that boat and leave this guy alone and let him. He's going to win a national championship for you at some point. It's almost impossible not to. So I think you just need to relax a little bit. Oregon's up there. They're using that Nike money. They've got a good, solid uh, recruiting class. Texas is, look at Texas, four or five stars. And they are using that oil money. <laughs> Texas T. Florida State, man, I'm telling you what, Florida State's been doing a good job. And Miami, too. Six and seven. Auburn. Auburn's been flipping a lot of really good uh, players. They've got two five-stars as well. Oklahoma, they always recruit well. Notre Dame, they recruit well. LSU, that's not – I'm surprised LSU's not in the top five. They've got a fantastic recruiting base. Brian Kelly needs to do a better job with that. Clemson and Tennessee are basically tied. They both got a couple of five-stars. And really, for us in Tennessee, I know y'all are looking at this and seeing 13th. We have the lowest number of commits just about other than a one or two up here. And our average is real good, over a 91. So I'm not terribly concerned about it, especially with the difference makers we got. Tennessee got Mike Matthews, a five-star. Then they got a top 100, uh, Braylon Staley, another great wide receiver. We're, we're becoming a wide receiver. You, again, it's only a matter of time. Boo Carter is going to be probably be a great safety. And then you go down here to another five-star, Jordan Ross, the number one edge rusher out of Alabama, number 11 nationally. So that's two five-stars. We've got a monster a six-foot-seven offensive lineman and Bennett Warren and a bunch of really good players, Peyton Lewis, who's super fast, Edwin Spillman, really good linebacker. And right on down the line, we loaded up on offensive linemen, which is great. We need that. After uh, this coming year, we're going to need offensive linemen. So we loaded up on them. And this is a good solid class. It's not super highly ranked, but the average is good. And you got to realize we've got to get rid of two to three scholarships a year for the next couple of years because of Jeremy Pruitt and that whole fiasco. 
We lost 25 scholarships. Now, we've gotten rid of most of them, but we still got a few to give up. So we're not able to go up to the 25, 26, 27 like some of these other teams. So don't expect our ranking to necessarily be super high. It's the average that's key for us. And we're doing really well with, with blue chip ratio, staying above 50%, which means you've got more four stars and five stars than you do three stars. And we've done that two years in a row. And really it boils down to, look, if Nico plays well with our offensive scheme, we'll be back scoring 40 points a game and we'll start dominating again. And we're fully replacing the secondary, which was our Achilles heel. And we just picked up a couple of really good players uh, in the secondary and the transfer portal. And that's uh, McCoy out of Oregon State, very good uh, cornerback. Jacoby Thomas is going to be a very good safety for us. He's out of MTSU, but a lot of teams wanted him. And we got the number one tight end out of the uh, transfer portal in Holden Stace. So we're filling, uh, we're filling needs in the transfer portal. And that's what we did last year, and it worked out pretty well. And that's pretty much what Heupel's trying to do. You can see that he's concerned about culture. He doesn't want to bring in a bunch of uh, high-dollar guys out of the transfer portal and then mess up the entire chemistry of the team, which can easily happen. Ask Texas A&M what happens when you, you know, bring in a bunch of young guys, pay them a ton of money, and they're, and they're not really uh, helping the team that much that first year. The other players get ticked. So it's a balancing act. It just really is. Now we're going to get into the two teams that I think are struggling in recruiting. And here you can see Billy Napier. He's down to number 15, and that's assuming that he gets to keep the two uh, big-time recruits that have not signed yet. As you can see right now, they only have one top 100 player that has uh, signed, and he's number 81. They're still waiting on DJ Lagway and LJ McRae, and LJ McRae, I understand, is not going to sign today one way or the other, and that's one of their uh, five-star guys, the defensive line. DJ Lagway, they've got to get him. It is absolutely critical. If, if they lose out on him, it'll be a fiasco. And there is talk that he might flip to USC, but it's not heavy talk. And actually, let's take a look at Twitter real quick. Probably by the time I edit this, he'll have come out. Okay, it says uh, he's going to sign at 4.30 today, which is half an hour from now, and I'll be in the middle of editing, so I won't be able to see that. I think he's going to stick with Florida, but USC and A&M are pushing hard right now, it says. So it's not in, gosh, man, if they lose DJ Lagway, oh, that'll be terrible. Here's a guy that says, here's Billy Napier waiting to see what DJ Lagway is going to do. I think that's 100% right. That might be a live video for all we know. And let's take a look at Jim Harbaugh's class. He's at number 16 in the country. This is a guy that's in the playoff, number one right now. And he's sitting at number 16. And he's just got a bunch of uh, four stars and three stars. You know, not that they're bad players or anything. You know, he didn't really knock it out of the park. I would say that's pretty poor, honestly, to have 26 commits, which is a lot, and only be 16th, and you've got supposedly the number one team in the country. That's very odd. Let's take a look at some of these other teams. South Carolina, they've only got 16 commits, but they've got some decent quality commits, Some couple of big-timers. They got uh, a five-star edge rusher and another five-star um, offensive tackle. They've done well in the offensive tackle category. So they've got a couple of five stars and nine four stars, but they've only got 16 players. But I think they've been uh, getting pretty heavy in the uh, transfer portal. Let's see what they've been doing in the portal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they've been very heavy in the portal. Three star, three. Well, you know, those aren't bad ones there. Almost four stars. And a lot of uh, a lot of guys right there, as you can see. So they're filling their needs in the portal, which makes sense because they only have 16 uh, recruits. Makes sense. So not, not too bad, honestly. That's not too bad. You know Ole Miss is at 21, but they're spending all their money in the transfer portal, so I'm not too concerned about this. This is what Lane Kiffin's doing. He's just playing the transfer portal and just getting some good, solid players in, the, uh, in recruiting. Missouri, they're number 24. Kentucky's number 25, which is, you know, about where they normally are. Mississippi State's at 35, et cetera. So you can see the winners and the losers, Georgia, Alabama, Ohio State, obviously, and on down the line. I am not displeased at all with uh, Tennessee's getting those two five-stars and 11 four-stars. That's good numbers and a good average, over 91. I, I don't know what's going to happen with Florida. If they lose even one of these guys, which I think they're probably going to lose that uh, defensive lineman, that's going to push them to like 19th. They may fall out of the top 20. Even if they keep DJ Lagway, they're still going to probably end up 17th, 18th. And look, they get rid of coaches for stuff like that. So this is, this is tough for Napier. Uh, he's going into next year. He's got to win. I'll just go ahead and tell you, if he does not get off to a good start 
maybe uh, five and two or six and two or something like that, and he winds up going six and six, which is what I think he's going to do. That uh, schedule is brutal. He'll be gone. I just don't see it. Now he doesn't even have the recruiting to hold on to. So it is what it is, and they'll be trying to get another coach, and they'll probably knock on Lane Kiffin's door, but Lane may not leave Ole Miss. Ole Miss is spending money. He may decide he's got it pretty good there. I did think that was the perfect uh, landing spot for him, but Florida may have, may not be able to get him. So we'll see how that plays out. But those are the winners and losers, and we'll keep an eye on that transfer portal uh, situation. And Jordan Seaton, by the way, is still up in the air. We don't know what he's going to do, and it looks like it's between – I don't even think he – that whole Colorado thing didn't make any sense to me, and it still doesn't. I don't think he's going to wind up at Colorado. I think he's going to wind up at either Tennessee, Oregon. There's talk of um, Maryland as a possibility. It says Jordan Seaton has flipped his commitment from Colorado to Maryland. Huge pickup for Coach Loxley. says Pete Camel. Who is Pete Camel? Northeast football recruiting insider. Flipped his commitment from Colorado to uh, Maryland. That's a possibility. Hmm. Let's see what it says here. Up. Oh, yep. Right here it says a crystal ball has been placed for Maryland to flip uh, Jordan Seaton. Good grief! So all that hubbaloo and Colorado fans giving Tennessee grief, and it looks like he's going to wind up at Maryland for all, of all places. <laughs> Shut up! Man, they're not going to be happy in Colorado. I can tell you that. That was their big jewel of the uh, recruiting class. So pretty interesting. Jordan Seaton will probably be in the transfer portal next week. <laughs> but anyway, I did want to cover all this, talk about recruiting a little bit, National Signing Day. And uh, it's been a very interesting day. I'm sure uh, y'all have tried to follow it as best you can, depending on how much you got to work. And I'm still recovering. I'm under the weather still, but I, I knew I had to do a video today. I mean, it's National Signing Day. So anyway, if you like this content, be sure to hit that like button. Let's remember to continue to cover all the recruiting, of course, SEC, my vols, and everything else is going on in NCAA. If you've not subscribed, it's on your right, my left. Just hit this little button right here. I'd appreciate it. Costs you nothing and helps me out. And right over here is the most recent video YouTube. Thanks you'll enjoy. And we'll see you next time on Sports Talk Jay.